So we have two final keynotes, both amazing speakers, to close CVC23. Our first keynote speaker has been de delivering the closing keynote last year, and I have mentioned last year that she is a female powerhouse, and that still has not changed. Um, and I am curious to hear that in a span of one year, what has changed at NIR? Marie? Marie Flamont. So, next one? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fan club. <laughs> um, well, I thought, given the incredible weather that is outside, the only way probably to have people in one room is to talk about the two most trendy things, which are blockchain and AI. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the goal of that talk. Uh, but all joke aside, you will see there is actually a very, very strong link between near and AI and in our origin story. So a couple of things. Uh, we have 20 minutes or so. I want to do three things. One, of course, uh, what is near, where are we at, and what, are, what is the evolution in our journey. I also want to take a step back and remind ourselves of why Web3, I think why all of us are here, uh, and explain a little bit why we think AI is near. What is near? Uh, all of you might have heard about near as a layer one, a proof of stake layer one. At near, we've always thought about simplicity and usability uh, for users. And that's why we always prioritize what does it mean for developers to be able to develop, for users to actually be able to use. Uh, security, scalability, and sustainability are also uh, things that have been embedded from day one. But NIR is not just a layer one. One of the things that actually we've been embarking on as a journey is to evolve from just a layer one to become what we call a blockchain operating system. And what does that mean? Well, in short, it means that if you look at the layer one landscape today, there is actually over 150 layer one or even more. And it's actually, it feels very territorial and it feels actually uh, very clicktic. And that's probably not what is needed for really solving the problems of Web3 as we see them needed. And therefore, what is needed is the trend of what we hear talk a lot about, which is a world that is actually interoperable and multi-chain. And a world that is also thinking about where do you want to decentralize? Do you want to decentralize just the front end, the middleware, or actually the back end? And that's because of the technology we've been building and near for many years now. We have the unique ability to be able to do that. If you want to learn more, I highly encourage you to actually uh, look at the blockchain operating system. Very concretely, what does it mean? It means that our website, near.org, uh, is probably the first and the only fully rendered website on Web3. Uh, and you can actually start chatting and creating widgets and multiplying things uh, on near.org. But let's go back to the topic, which is AI. Um, Near the name is actually because singularity is near. The background of Alex and Ilya, the co-founders of Near, is in AI. And so the story, the originating story, is actually the, the initial idea was to say, well, imagine if there was a program in the world that actually could self-code, uh, wouldn't that be cool? Um, and to do that, uh, the guys had actually, uh, you know, freelancers and project owners all around the world and needed to pay them. And to pay those guys, they thought, okay, we heard about blockchain, so we're going to use blockchain. And guess what? They figured out very quickly that it was very expensive and very slow and didn't really work. And so that's why this transition from the original idea of AI became a pivot into actually creating NIR as a layer one. So I'm mentioning that because there is a genuine, real strong link uh, into what we do and, and how that comes. Uh, Ilya is one of the co-authors of Attention is All You Need, which is probably the most read uh, AI paper there is out there. So that was our evolution, started as a near.ai, became a layer one, evolving into a blockchain operating system. Our mission remains absolutely the same. We're committed to bringing one billion users into Web3 because we genuinely believe that actually it helps create a better world. So why Web3? Uh, when you look at actually the world as we have it around us, and when you look at uh, many, many things from the ecological crisis to the economical crisis to the political divide and the psychological divide that we have in our society, I think there's never been a better moment to go back to the basis of why do we need Web3, because it empowers each and every individual, because actually it can also help us solve some of those very large problems. 
Sometimes we get distracted and we think about trading or casinos instead of actually thinking about solving real problems. But that's the origin of Web3, right? That's, that's why we are here. Now, where are we at on this journey? I think we are somewhere between Web2 and Web3, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree to that. I know the term Web2.5 is very often criticized for not being the real thing. But here is my question. How do we get 1 billion users if we have no ambition to actually bring on the ones that are in Web2? Quite impossible. And therefore, doing that is actually very important, being able to bring Web2 users into Web3. More than ever, when you look at actually the state of the internet or actually the uh, internet being taken over by very few uh, individuals, I think it's fair to say, and we've collected those different images from people saying that more than ever, it feels that we do need uh, to go back to the root of ownership and decentralization. And that's also our, our deepest belief. And yet, uh, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> All of us. I think it's not just them. We are all part of this ecosystem. We all suffer when one of us actually suffers. And so the reality is that we have progress to make on usability because if it still takes five different steps to get into Web3, well, no one is going to be able to do that. I'm very happy to report that uh, NIR has launched something that is called Fast Auth, uh, which you can try on NIR.org, which is actually better than any Web2 onboarding. And with that, without actually having to know anything about crypto, you can actually be onboarded into Web3 experiences. We need things like that to really be able to truly have the adoption that is needed. Uh, things are not yet fully decentralized. Uh, most apps are actually centralized services. I think we heard a lot from the previous panels, but there is still you know, centralized exchanges. And, and it's an additional layer that is built on the true original vision. Uh, it's a lot of different separate entities. Multi-chain interoperability uh, is something that is ultimately extremely needed. We cannot ask the partners that we have to have to make a choice for life uh, if things are not actually interoperable. At the end of the day, the end users do not care what technology things are run on. They care if things are actually doing something 10x or 100x better for them. Um, anyway, we have a lot of work to do collectively, uh, but... Uh, face is definitely there. So let's talk about AI. AI has made definitely the headlines over the last few weeks and months, and I think that's definitely not going away. More and more VCs are actually taking their money out of Web3 because that's not trending anymore and putting it into AI. Now, when I look at actually the technologies that exist and the link that can be made between both of them, there is a genuine need, we, I believe, for AI to actually be leveraging the capabilities of blockchain, which ultimately are a ledger that is transparent and traceable. Some of the things, and I, 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 I'm sure it's on a lot of, of people's mind today, but um, the speed at which we are entering a dystopian world uh, are actually, uh, is actually very worrying. Um, and when you look at how things are panning out, it's very easy to think that actually AI is becoming more superpower to centralize things rather than actually going in a way of decentralizing uh, power. And so there is an urgency also to think through, well, how do we actually map things out in a way that redistributes you know, uh, ownership and redistribute actually governance versus actually centralizing around very, very few individuals. So the things I'm putting out there are just ideas, right? By no means I'm going to say that I, I know exactly, but it's something that we think a lot about uh, at NIR. We might not be making a lot of noise about it, but again, because of the background uh, of a lot of folks in the team, it is something that is front of mind. And so the couple of following slides are ideas on what this intersection between blockchain and AI could look like concretely. Authentication is the first one. I mean, we are weeks or months away from having the entire internet spammed by we don't know what is true anymore and we actually don't know what's the origin of anything anymore. Now, good news is the whole purpose of actually blockchain could be having traceability and origin and time stamping and therefore being able to stand by and know exactly what is coming from where, something that could prove very, very helpful. A lot of AI functions on actually very large data sets, which we often forget, but are very often also done in developing countries. And actually to do that, you need to train models, but you also need to actually micro pay or have transactions for people. 
Well, near crowd or near task is actually one of our first experiments of that, and the amount of data in that open data set that is available is very, very large. More initiatives like that can also help create a truly open AI. A lot of uh, gamers around the world are sitting on a ton of GPU and actually thinking back of how do we decentralize that access uh, is something that could definitely also be uh, thought about and, and leverage. And the last part on this slide, how can we actually prove you know, the integrity on chain? Today, doing security audits, and, and it's been a pain for the entire industry, doing security audits and validating that is a key bottleneck. And guess what? The minute you do it, your security audit is not valid anymore. Well, is there a way to actually leverage AI to automate that and to have that traceability? Probably there is. I already mentioned that, but actually I think it's, it's very uh, important when we look at uh, what is, where are we putting our data, and, and I'm not going to do a show of hand for who's using ChatGPT because I'm pretty sure it's going to be 100%, but whatever we write into this machine uh, is actually not open and it's feeding a closed machine. And I think we have to ask ourselves if that's really the true future that we envision or if there is a better future, and probably there is actually a better future. There is a, a genuine, between democratization and empowerment, I think they're probably the same idea, but the reality is that lowering the barrier to entry for Web3 to really have billions of users, yes, it's usability, but it's also the ability for more developers to participate. And if we are only leveraging Solidity and Rust, well, that's only a small portion of developers. Uh, Near has a JavaScript SDK that is enabled, but now you can actually even power that more. Imagine that people who don't know how to code are able to actually have prompts who can actually leverage code and therefore build uh, different components. If you are interested in more on near.org, there is a great post written by Ilya, AI on near, a look ahead, and some of the tangible ideas that are being put out there. Um, and for anyone who's actually interested, I know some of the conversation I already had being here today, there is definitely a lot of interest in that. I think we also need to be looking pragmatically at what will happen from an investment perspective. And it's true that while we see a lot of the capital fund flow from Web3 to AI, I think finding the, the merge between the two might actually be a very good pass forward. So some of those I already mentioned, so I won't go back into it, but the post is uh, very interesting to uh, read. Um, this is concretely uh, auto-generating decentralized front-end is what is possible on, on near.org. And so what does that mean uh, concretely? It means that actually you can, you can create whatever front-end you wish to create, and it can still be running, for example, on Ethereum in the back-end if those are the dApps that you're using, or actually on near. Uh, if you go, for example, on boss.gg, uh, those are some of the attempts at showing actually what uh, the blockchain operating system can do. And here again, leveraging AI, you can multiply that uh, extremely, uh, extremely fast. There is usually a video on here, but it doesn't work. So um, we've actually had uh, in the community uh, development on exactly that, on actually starting to have quests for saying, how can we develop very fast and extremely effectively on the blockchain operating system, new widgets that actually uh, train and develop with AI. Yeah, I think it doesn't work. So I will leave you with that thought which is actually, to get to mass adoption, we do need to lower the barrier to entry, and actually we need Web3 to really have a killer use case. And my question for you, and I think it is actually possible, but is actually AI the killer uh, use case for blockchain? Thank you. Let's make some noise. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, do you want to take a yeah, sure. A, question. a couple questions from the I audience. I think we have six minutes for, sorry, yeah, five minutes for questions. Anyone has questions or chocolate? <laughs> yes. Give me one second. Let me yes. bring you the microphone. So the question is, can you explain Near Horizon? Yeah, I didn't cover all the things that, um, that are done on here. I thought I would actually uh, foster today on here. Near Horizon is uh, the accelerator that we've launched uh, from Near Foundation. We realized in 2022, actually, that uh, if you just give grants to projects, but there is no hand-holding, or there is actually no access to resources, or there is no connection made with actually backers, it doesn't work. And so that's what Near Horizon is doing. And Near Horizon is built, uh, obviously, on the blockchain operating system. Uh, and it has actually, it's also, 
the next generation of fractionalized work, because let's say you're a lawyer and you want to actually put yourself out there to help startups that are being built uh, on that uh, accelerator, you can do that. Thank you for that question. Great plug. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Uh, so up until now, basically all uh, the panel that we, we saw before, they were talking about two major things. One was uh, trust and the other, well, centralization. <laughs> and uh, whenever a technologist comes there, it talks about trustless and decentralized. So who do you think is going to win? Is going to be finance and financial servicing services driving technology or technology um, revolutionize and disrupt financial services? Great question. Well, I think we've seen over, and I'm going to be a bit pessimistic here, but we've seen over and over in the world that, unfortunately, when we trust humans, we all have biases and incentives and we think a certain way. And so very often, actually, it ends up not necessarily being the right choice. Um, what I think ultimately will win is open source. And I don't think closed source systems will win. And I think actually having visibility on the code, because also, can you really trust code? Well, same problem. Code is made, well... <laughs> It's made by humans, soon by machine. <laughs> but code is still made by humans, and humans have biases and are putting their biases into the code. And so the only way to really ultimately trust that uh, is open source. And I'm sure uh, the closing keynote will have great ideas on, on open sourcing. So. <laughs> Maybe, I, I don't know, I'm just thinking, um, building on your question, I just think, you know, whatever we do, AI is here. And actually, regulation, it's important to go fast on that front. I, I think there is, more, there is more a real need for AI to leverage blockchain, whether it's actually for regulation, or actually also, like, you know, we're probably not too far away from a world where your AI is talking to mine and they have an account on a blockchain. They're not going to open a JP Morgan account, right? So I think we're not too far also from that world. So I see those practical use cases, which, yeah, maybe the question could be uh, framed differently. <laughs> Last question? Yes. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably the hope. Um, I'll leave you on that with a parting thought. We thought um, AI was actually going to let us you know, go out and enjoy the nice weather. But today, I'm sure if you look at your feeds, what's happening is that AI is having a blast in creating great music and creating great images. Think about that for the future we're building on. And I think there is definitely use cases for blockchain to make AI safer. And so those are to be found. Thank you. Thank you.